Hey, Jim Hoffman here again for EMS Office Hours in the Monday Minutes. We're going to continue on with the EMS Quick Study Tips and Help and Episode 27, continuing with the poisonings and overdose section. Um, and again, this is all inside the EMS Quick Study Guide that can be found over at EMSSEO.com. All right. Um, of course, I always like to mention why this stuff is important. I know you guys have been watching these videos. You know my thoughts on this. It's great for exam prep, right? Because what you're going to see on your exams, whether it's a national exam or local exam, at some point, believe it or not, these are key elements that I'm showing you here that will show up on the test. But more importantly, my hope, of course, is that you will... Um, you know, see something here or, or not understand something and want to go ahead and look further, right? Google it, open up your textbook, look in your textbook, find out more about this. It's very easy to forget this content once we're out on the street, right? Or even once you've, let's say you, you're in medic school right now or EMT school right now, you've learned about the airway, let's say, right? Then, a month later, you kind of start forgetting, you know, things that were said in that lecture, right? So hopefully you'll go back, you'll watch a video like this, you'll crack open your textbook, maybe use a resource like turbomedic.com to go ahead and get more information and further solidify your knowledge base, okay? And that's my hope, of course. Now, this is why I think it's important. It's going to make you a better clinician. It's going to be better for your patients. And better for the agency you're working, making them proud, and of course, you know, great for you as a provider as well. So let's get into this week and talk about uh, poisoning. And like I said at the end of last uh, episode, was we're going to talk about the routes of of absorption and talking about things like uh, the ingestible types, right? And these where the poison is going to uh, enter the body, right through the mouth. All right, and it's absorbed through the digestive tract. You know, things like prescription drugs, sleeping pills, right? Things like mushrooms, okay? Some types of food you might poison on, right? Um, and depending upon where you are, a lot of times the care can be getting that that uh, activated charcoal, right? Or you have to get them to the emergency room where they're going to go ahead and do the whole gastric lavage, right? So. Um, those are usually the options for that or some other type of ingestible, um, you know, treatment might be available. But of course, that depends upon where you are, your local protocols, and of course, what the patient actually ingested. Um, something else that, that we have is um, inhalation, right? Again, toxic fumes, gases that we might inhale into our lungs. Carbon monoxide is the big one. Right, a lot of, for us treatment a lot of times is pretty simple. It's going to be getting the patient away from the fumes or that gas, get them to fresh air, and provide them with oxygen. But again, it's going to depend upon, as always, where you are, the type of gases that the patient might have uh, inhaled, and what local protocols allow you to do. So, of course, everything that I'm saying in these these. Monday minutes, of course, you want to follow your local guidelines. And if you have a question about your local guidelines and how it relates to what we talk about here, ask your medical director, ask your ALS coordinator, okay, to get clarification on it, okay? All right. And, of course, good old absorption. This is where it can pass through the skin, right, into the bloodstream, all right? Things like um, uh, pesticides can be one, um some uh, types of chemicals, okay? Usually you're gonna brush these types of chemicals off if you can, flush with water, remove any uh, clothing that might be affected by those chemicals, you know, um, and of course, protect yourself, right? Um, you know, it's very important. I just mentioned protect yourself, right? And this is something, and we talked about this early, early on, we'll talk about it more as these Monday minutes go on, guys. Your safety, of course, is always paramount, right? Make sure you do the scene size up, right? It, that comes first before anything. Assure your safety and the safety of your partner or other responders and, and bystanders that might be there, 
okay if we're not safe we can't really help anybody just keep that in mind i find too often we kind of just regurgitate that scene safety bsi sort of phrase right and a lot of times we don't we don't really practice it ourselves um please make sure your safety comes first all right guys back to the routes of absorption talking about absorption and talking about different ways to handle it right um and again you're going to go by depending upon what the chemical is what that pesticide might be is going to depend upon how you are going to treat it right again follow your local guidelines all right, and what you can and can't do. All right, and of course, what the substance is. All right, lastly, injection, right? This is that toxic material that gets injected by, let's say, a needle, okay? Um, we talked before about, uh, you know, errors in dosaging and errors that get done by nurses and doctors and things like that. Um, and so how about stingers, right? You know, sort of stingers, meaning bees and things like that, right? Um, deal with the patient's symptoms, all right? You know, of course, common treatments are things like epinephrine for bees or wops type stings. Um, some snake bites might have an antivenom, uh, Narcan, right, for that injectable overdose, right, of, of, of uh, opiate or something like that, right? Um, so these are just the kind of the, the routes that are going to go. The treatment's going to, of course, depend upon what it is. No matter if it's ingested, in, inhaled, absorbed, or injected, it doesn't matter. It's going to depend upon what that substance is, how you're going to treat it, right? There's different ways that each of, as I noted, in each one of these, there are different things that you can ingest, different things you can inhale, then absorb or inject. And of course, your treatment will be different for each of those right? So keep that in mind when thinking about treating uh, patients like that. Now, some geographically specific type things we can talk about real quick. Um, snakes, of course, uh, and particularly uh, venomous snakes, and that's going to, of course, depend upon where you are. And the same goes for spiders, right? You know, brown recluse and black widows and things like that. You know, Depending upon where you are, you might not really come in contact with these types of, um, you know, poisoning, these types of exposures, right? Same thing with marine, you know, jellyfish, uh, lionfish even, right? You might not really come in contact with these a lot, uh, depending upon where you are. But at the same time, you know, me coming from New York City, never really saw snake bites, right? Never really saw a lot of spider bites, Okay. But there were instances, and I knew people who came in contact with venomous snake bites because people, believe it or not, keep these things as pets, all right? Or they bring them back from someplace, you know, from another part of the country or whatever, all right? Um, so, of course, you know, depending upon the snake, the spider, or whatever the marine animal might be, is going to depend upon how you treat it. So, if your area, I'm sure, depending upon where you are, some areas have specific treatments for these types of things so check your protocol so that you're ready should you have a patient who's bitten by a venomous snake let's say you're in florida or somewhere in the south right or spider bites or or you know jellyfish or you know uh stings and things like that okay check your protocol i'm sure that you have something there if you don't you should look out and find out what your company what your 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 organization policy is when it comes to these types of uh, poisonings or envenomations, okay? Now, the other last thing I just want to talk about real quick on when it comes to routes and, and geographically specific is industrial. You get manufacturing industries, got to be careful there, right? What can be specific with that? I mentioned a little bit before on the last episode, chemical plants are a big one, oil refineries, right? Start thinking about that, what, what you might have in your area, okay? Um, and also transportation industries, Railroad routes or interstate highways, right? What can be getting transported back and forth on that rail or transported on your main highway that might have a chemical, might have some sort of pesticide or some, something that you might have to uh, contend with, okay? Just, you know, something to think about is to just sort of, in your mind, think about where you are and what might actually be passing through your town. Even the smallest town might have a, a rail go through that might be carrying something. What is your organization's plan for that? 
okay? Uh, just some stuff to kind of, um, you know, think about when we talk about this, these types of, um, you know, geographically specific uh, poisonings and, and, and uh, you know, overdose type of uh, uh, situations, okay? Um, real quick, lastly, I want to talk about toxidromes. Um, and this is something I want you to kind of remember because this might you see on a, you might see this on a test, and this is groups of drugs that present with the same patterns of toxicity. All right, so keep that in mind. You might see this on a test, guys. All right, uh, might ask you, you know, the question might even say, uh, what is it called when or you know when groups of drugs that present with same patterns. Of toxicity, what is that called? Or uh, drugs that that present the same patterns of toxicity is called, and you know what I mean. So keep that in mind. You might see it on a test. Okay, toxidrome. Remember that. Um, some management, some quick tips on the management. Like I said before, follow your local guidelines. Okay, uh, uh, protect and maintain those ABCs: the airway, the breathing, the circulation. All right. Think about antidotes if it's possible. It may be available, especially if you live in an area that might have an antidote. Okay, of course, most of us for things like heroin or opiate type overdose, we've got Narcan. Okay, uh, so you know that might be available to you, um, but don't wait around for the antidote. Okay, don't think that's the cure all for. It. Remember the basics. Go back to those ABCs. Okay, for for your patient. All right, when you talk about managing. Um, those patients, and of course, follow your local protocols on that. And if you have questions about it, when you look at your mo local protocols on this type of stuff, ask your medical director, ask your ALS coordinator, or your educational uh, body of your organization to get clarification on it. Okay, and of course, anything you don't understand, crack open that book, guys. All right, and read a little bit more on this type of content. I'm just trying to give you the basics here and stuff that you're going to see on tests. Okay, not necessarily the the probably two day lecture you might normally get for this type of of content. Okay, all right, that's it for this week. Next time, we're gonna talk about uh, patient assessment, um, and we're gonna talk about it that that's kind of directly related to someone who might be exposed or, or might have a poisoning issue or an overdose issue going on. So that's going to be next time. Uh might be a little bit longer than usual. We're going to go through the whole thing, the what you should be asking, the signs and symptoms, physical findings, and your focused exam. Okay. So we're going to talk about that next week. So I hope you can use these Monday minutes. Um, don't forget, guys, follow me on the social media channels. All right. These are my links directly right here. All right. For Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And if you want Snapchat, follow me on Snapchat. I friend me there. My Snapchat handle is EMS Safe. Okay, friend me there, and I'll friend you back. I think you. I kind of offer different content and different spin on things on all of these uh, social media channels. So join me on any of these, um, and any or all actually. And, uh, you know, we can we can uh, meet up there and, and converse there and engage with each other there about things EMS and beyond. All right, guys, I'm going to cut it off here. I'm going a little bit longer than I usually like with these episodes. Of course, if you've got some Monday minutes of your own, some questions, comments on this, send them over to me. You can tweet them to me. If you join me on Twitter, send me a direct message there. If you join me on Facebook, you can message me on Facebook as well. Um... And you can also send me an email. And that email is contact at emsofficehours.com. All right, guys, that's it. Again, as always, stay safe. I am Jim Hoffman for EMS Office Hours and the Monday Minutes. Until next time, stay safe.